having dealt with Kirchhoff's law, there's one other concept just like to go over as part of the chapter, and that's the idea of an internal resistance. This so far, of course, refers to the internal resistance of a battery. So, so far, we've kind of idealized our battery as a pure voltage source. So the potential would just rise up the same amount, no matter how much current it's trying to drive or put out. But of course, any real material unless it's a superconductor, would have some amount of resistance. And the material that we use to make batteries is not an exception. So somehow, every single battery, as charges go through it, it's also going to lose some energy based on resistance. It may sound very complicated, but really, what we then do to model such a battery is we say that we have a battery with a resistor caught in series. And that's basically what we do. So once we model it as an ideal voltage source in series with a resistor, then the rest of the analysis, we just treat them as two separate components in the schematic. You can switch up the order of the components without changing the circuit. And so the actual analysis is actually quite simple once we've made the ch change of the model. So let's see how that works in the question. So in this case, we have a toy that's supplied by three batteries with some resistance as well as another battery having some other internal resistance. The load resistance is whatever it's outside driving it. And then let's draw a diagram of this, which is part A. So part A, we can draw a diagram. And we're going to have four batteries in a row. So if the first battery with some internal resistance, the second battery with some internal resistance, third battery, and fourth battery finally. And then driving some kind of low resistance that's out here. Call that our low at 10 ohms. Then with each of the batteries, we have the first one with those values, second one, also the same thing. And then the third one, and then the fourth one, that's the one that's a little different. We can give these names too. We can call this V1, little r1, V2, little r2, V3, little r3, and V4, little r4. We can put the dotted lines everywhere, but we're not going to bother. Those dotted lines make no difference to the way we analyze this. So this is a circuit, and we basically only have one single loop. Very simple, so we do the one loop. Uh, everything's going to have the same current, so we're going to assume all these directions to be going that way with my loop 1. And all the i's are the same. So as we go through the loop, we have V1 minus IR1 plus V2 minus IR2 plus V3 minus IR3 plus V4 minus IR4 and then minus I times the big low resistance. We can then collect everything with and without the I. And you can see that this is basically a statement of we can reduce resistors in series by adding them into a single resistance. And this on the other side is basically batteries in series and we just add up all their voltages. Subbing in the numbers, we'll get that my I is equal to 6.27 volts all over 10.16 ohms. Then we get the current, which is what we want for part B. Looking back, part C now, how much power is supplied to the load? Power, as you know, is IV, which for resistor is I squared times R. Plugging in the numbers, this is RL, of course, for the 10 ohms, we would get 3.80 watts. Then part D, somehow the total power supplied low reduces down to 0.5 watts. So how much is the one battery, that one R, little r4 has changed. So we have to find out how big that is. Knowing the low power through the low resistance is 0.5. We can work backwards because we know that that's the case to work out what I is. So I would be that PL divided by RL square root. And so we can solve for the new current as a result of one of the resistance changing. Then through the same equation, we know that if we take the total voltage divided by the current, we get this, which seems like it's a total of 28.4 or 0.04 ohms now. 
subtracting my load and the other three, I get my R4 to be 17.98 ohms, which is roughly 18 ohms. So as a battery kind of gets used up, the it's not that the voltage generated by the chemical reaction drops, is that the internal resistance builds up so much that as the battery supplies any current, it must go through this internal resistance and that uses up a significant part of your potential. So then the potential that is actually measurable between your two terminals of the batteries will be significantly less. And if you ever want to deal with such problems involving internal resistance, the only thing you really have to do is just to model the internal resistance as a resistor in series with the batteries.